In the last video, we went through how to set up different attacks on buttons, active frames and apply damage on each. So this time, I will cover how I create hurtbox, hitbox, and health bar. Remove wormhole A first. Due to some limitations in GBG, such as the number of teleports can be used, max no done, and object parenting. So I decided to use a fixed size hurtbox. The setup is very simple, just pull out a touch sensor. Same size as the person no done, and parent to the center. Detect person no done at this moment. Connect my output check to see how everything happens. It looks strange, right? When he throws his punch, the punch touches him, but the touch sensor doesn't count for that. Unless I move very close to him. The person Nodan is a box shape. When he throws his punch, his punch visually touches him, but the person Nodan remains the same size as the box shape. For better variety, I am going to show you how to create a hitbox, so the game will have better detection. Let's free up some room in our workspace. I use a pencil object for my player 1 hitbox, disable solid and set zero gravity. Place a teleport entrance H on the pencil position. Then create and parent the teleport exit H on player 1. Snap the exit center to person Nodan's minus Z. Connect the kick timer to activate the teleport H and take a look. Looking good. So we are going to send the pencil back to its origin when the attack is finished. Pull out a teleport entrance G, and parent to person. Connect kick time to a knot with on and connect to entrance G. Place the exit G at the pencil origin. Now, when I press the kick button, the pencil comes to person the dog. After the attack is finished, it will go back to its origin. Larger the pencil a bit to have a better cover area. We have a vertical hitbox. I am going to create a horizontal one for punch. Stack another teleport entrance on pencil and set ID to F. Connect to the punch timer this time. Create and parent exit F to the person. Snap its negative Y to target's negative Z. Connect the punch timer to not node on which is connected to teleport G. It doesn't work well on rotation, that's because when it teleports back, it already rotated. So we have to do something on the G exit.
change the teleport physics to reset. So the transformation of the pencil will be reset when sent back to origin. Works well. Let's put this pencil off screen. Change the herd box detection to pencil and take a look. The hit detection is much better. Let me clean up my script a bit, so we can have a clear workspace for the health bar. Delete the wormhole ink first, so we can use it anywhere if we need to. I am going to set the opponent HP to 1250. As I mentioned in a previous video, if multiple outputs connected to the same input, the value will add together. Let's use a wormhole A to make sure that We have the damage set up here before. Connect the damage counter to subtractions input too. So now, we can see the health has been subtracted by player 1's attack. Let's make the attack have more impact. Put the damage effect on player 2 when touch sensor is active. Use divide to normalize player 2 health value. Remain health divided by total health. Since number nodon cannot display a decimal place, I use a map nodon to convert the value to percent here to double check and make sure this works. Okay, let's create a health bar. Pull out box extending object. The health bar works, but it scales on both ends. If you only want to scale on one end, make the other end snap to another object.
great. Let's find out how to make the length fit into the screen. The length of this yellow bar is 100% of health. The X scale is 5.8, so which means the extending box 100% size should be 5.8. Since the extending box minimum size is 0.1, the max scale should be 5.7 instead. this works charm. So you can change the damage and see the bigger effect. Let's create a dummy on player one side. So our health bar is finished. This part ends here. Next part 1 will walk through how I build blocking, dash, and switch side input.